Last time we started section 11.2 and we were looking at curves and we had just started polygons. We're going to continue our discussion of polygons and then finish out with symmetry today. All right, so some po common polygons. Um, one of our, our smallest number of sided polygons, so to speak, is a triangle. And a triangle can be classified in two ways. One way it can be classified is by its angles. So if we classify it by its angles, then what we're looking at is we're looking at a triangle that is either acute, right, or obtuse. An acute triangle is a triangle with three acute angles. A right triangle has one right angle, and then an obtuse triangle has one obtuse angle. So the right triangle and the obtuse triangle also have some angles that are acute, right? The other two of them are going to be, but they have this one angle that's not. So as you're taking a look at these, let's label the ones below. The first triangle, what is it? It's acute. It's so cute. It's just so cute. It's an acute triangle. How about the second one? It's a right triangle. And the third one is obtuse. Okay? And it's obtuse because this angle right here is more than 90 degrees. The middle one is a right angle because this angle right here is 90 degrees. So we can classify triangles by their angles. Um, another way we can classify triangles is by their sides. An equilateral triangle is a triangle with three congruent sides. All three congruent. An isosceles triangle is a triangle with two congruent sides. And a scalene triangle is a triangle with no congruent sides. Now here's the tricky thing. The first triangle on the screen below, the first one, what is it? It's equilateral. But here's the catch. It's also isosceles. Because the triangle definition about isosceles doesn't say exactly two sides or angles that are the same, right? Two sides that are the same. I said that wrong still. It doesn't say exactly two sides. It <coughs> says that it has two sides. So the best name for this picture is equilateral. But if you were to talk about isosceles triangles, this would actually be an isosceles triangle as well. Second shape, what is the second shape? That one's isosceles. And they don't have the third side marked at all, and visually we can be pretty sure that it's not the same length, right? Um, because it's not marked, we assume it's not equal. That's our assumption. So it would not be equilateral. And then the last one doesn't have any side lengths marked that are the same at all, comparative to one another. So this one is scalene. Next we're going to go on to quadrilaterals. We have quite a few quadrilaterals. The first one we're going to talk about is a trapezoid. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with one or two pairs of parallel sides, which is not the same definition in every textbook. Isn't that fun? So, sometimes isosceles triangles in some books, or isosceles triangles, trapezoids, excuse me, sometimes trapezoids in particular curriculums will say they have one and only one pair of parallel sides. Our book takes approach where it could be one or two. Now, an isosceles trapezoid is a trapezoid, okay, so it has one or two pairs of parallel sides, with two pairs of congruent base angles. So, the picture for isosceles trapezoid is the one in the middle, as long as I mark it, and I will. If the base angles, the angles on the bottom of the shape, are congruent, then I have an isosceles trapezoid. Now, it's also true that if the base angles are congruent, then so are the side lengths. 
hence that's the isosceles that's coming into play. It's really noisy outside. Wow. Okay, so the first picture, what is this shape? <coughs> it's still a trapezoid. Oops, I used black. Let me use the white. This is a trapezoid. Trapa e. It's a trapezoid. Again, it's, it isn't marked, which is not ideal, but it is a trapezoid because what do you notice in terms of the top of it and the bottom of it? They're parallel. So it would be much better if these were actually marked parallel to actually show that, but it is intended to be a picture that that was the case. That was my hope when I put it in there, is that we would see that those were parallel, therefore it's a trapezoid. The one in the middle does have the top, again, and the bottom parallel, and it has the bottom angles congruent. So this actually fits the description for an isosceles. trapezoid. Yeah. Yes, it is. Not only is a square a trapezoid, but a square would also be an isosceles trapezoid. Yeah, it would. Mm -hmm. This is one of the reasons I'm not a fan of this particular definition, is because odd feeling things happen when we do that. Yeah. But yeah. What you saying that the top line and the bottom line are congruent? I'm, Not congruent. Um, parallel. What the second one you said that they're congruent? The angles are congruent. The angles are congruent. Oh, I you said yeah. Right. This one is way bigger. I don't know what I'm thinking. That's all right. The green ones at the bottom. The green at the bottom are congruent. Yeah. Again, they'll be marked when you're looking at them in your book, but they don't always come marked when I'm grabbing them off the internet, so this is the way it goes. So, The last one is also another example of a trapezoid. Um, it's clearly not an isosceles trapezoid on that one, too, because the base angles very much don't look the same, right? So, But it is a trapezoid. Um, you might notice that first, first trapezoid drawn in there has what appears to be a right angle in it. That can happen. Like, that's okay. That will sometimes happen. doesn't change the fact that it is still a trapezoid. It has the parallel line on the top and the bottom, so we're good to go. But you can sometimes have a right trapezoid, trapezoid with a right angle. Not right as in it's correct. Some other common quadri or quadrilaterals is a parallelogram. Now, a parallelogram is a quadrilateral where there have both pair of opposite sides parallel. So trapezoid said one or two. This one says two. So if I have a parallelogram, then it's also a trapezoid. Because a parallelogram is two pairs of opposite sides parallel. But a trapezoid could have two pairs of opposite sides parallel as well. A rhombus is a parallelogram that's equilateral. So we've got the parallel sides, two pairs of parallel sides, and it's equilateral, so all four of the sides are the same length. So there's four pictures here below, and what we're going to do is to label them with every definition that fits. Okay? So the first one. Again, they aren't marked, but just let's, we're going to assume that they look like what they are supposed to look like, okay? I'm not trying to trick you here. What would you say is a good description of the first one? What is that shape? It's a parallelogram. But if it's a parallelogram, it also means that it's a what? Trapezoid. Trapezoid. So this is a parallelogram. And it's a trapezoid. Every time I write down parallelogram, I can write down trapezoid. Because a trapezoid is just a broader description of a, of a quadrilateral than a parallelogram is. What about the second one? What does it appear to be? It looks like a rhombus, right? We'll mark it as such just to clarify for ourselves. If I have all of these marked, then it's obvious um, that they are all congruent. And so this would then be a rhombus. 
but a rhombus is also a parallelogram. And a parallelogram is also a trapezoid. Now, I know you have another name for the third one, but we haven't actually done that yet in class. So using the three names we have so far, it's a trapezoid, it's a parallelogram. Is it a rhombus? Yeah. Oh, no, because these have to be longer than... Yeah. yeah, so in order to be a rhombus, all four sides have to be equal in length. Square, but not a rectangle. Yeah, this one is... It's a rectangle, right? The, yeah, I know. It looks square because you're at an angle on the board, yeah. It's supposed to look like a rectangle um, if you're seeing it at the right angle. So it's not actually a rhombus, but it is a parallelogram and therefore also a trapezoid. And what do you think about the third one? A fourth one, sorry. It's a parallelogram, so it's a trapezoid, and if I put marks on there, then we'll know for sure that it's also a rhombus. So a rhombus can look very much like um, a trapezoid. I mean, not a trapezoid, um, like a parallelogram, because it is a parallelogram. It can also look more tilted so that it actually looks diamond-like shape, which is the second picture. Okay, so don't let the tilt of a picture confuse the issue. That's not supposed to confuse the issue, but sometimes our, our brain plays tricks on us. So this is a rhombus, a parallelogram, and also a trapezoid. Yes, in fact, the third one that we just did where we wrote down parallelogram and trapezoid we could write down rectangle once we learn that it's a rectangle as well, right? And if we had the shape of a square, which we will in a minute, we'd have even more descriptors for it. All right, another shape, ones that I said we didn't have yet, but now we have them. Rectangles and squares. A rectangle is a parallelogram with one right angle, or a right angle is how it says it. it, has a right angle. A square is an equilateral rectangle. So a square is a rectangle and it's a rhombus. So my first picture is a rectangle and we had this shape on our previous slide and we also know that this shape is also what? Besides just being a rectangle, it's a parallelogram. And what else? Trapezoid. Now this picture is a square. I mean, it's not marked. We probably should have it marked. We'll mark it real quick. Look at that. Now it's a square. Okay, so this one's a square. What else is it? It's a rectangle, because all a rectangle is, is a parallelogram, which this is, with a 90 degree angle. And again, it's not marked, but we are assuming that those are 90 degree angles in our picture, right? So it's a square, it's a rectangle. What else is it? It's a parallelogram. It's a rhombus. And it's a trapezoid. So a, a square is like you. You're a square today. Do you know that? Everybody, everybody's a square. Because you are a student, and you're a friend, and you're a daughter or son, you're a sister, brother, whatever. It's like split personalities, right? That's you. So you're a square today. So would you call it an isosceles trapezoid? You could call it an isosceles trapezoid, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to write it down, but we'll say you can, because <laughs> you're right, Emily. Yeah, you could. Okay, there is one more shape, and it's a kite. And a kite is a little bit different than all the other ones. So a kite is a quadrilateral where two adjacent sides are congruent, and the other two adjacent sides are also congruent. 
So the first picture has them actually marked on there. See, I do sometimes find pictures with markings, okay? So the sides on the left here are congruent. They're adjacent. Adjacent just means next to one another, and they are congruent. And these other two sides that are adjacent are also congruent. They've got lines drawn in the middle here. Those are actually diagonals. We learned that last time. Um, not actually a part of the shape itself, just a portion of the inside of it. The two pictures on the right are interesting because they are both pictures, again, if properly marked, of kites. The first one, you probably would have been just fine with saying, yep, that's a kite, no problem. But I'm guessing if you saw the second one, you might not automatically think, hey, this also fits the definition of kite. But it does. So this piece and this piece are congruent, and these two are congruent. And there's nothing in the description that doesn't allow that. What would we have to actually have in the description that wouldn't allow that if this was a not, not a possibility? Yeah, it had to do with whether it's concave or, con or convex, right? And we don't know that about this particular shape. It doesn't say it has to be one or the other, so we have both possibilities. So this is a second form of a kite. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do some true-false questions. Those are fun, right? So we're going to just write down true or false, but we're going to describe verbally why the answer is true or false. Yes? So we talked about the kite can be concave or convex. The mm -hmm. other ones can't be concave, can they? Um, because we have parallel side issues. Okay. That's why they can't be. Yeah, everything else had to do with being parallel or having some form, either two parallel sides or, th or, or one pair of parallel sides, and you can't do that and also be concave. Yeah. Yes, so this one we talked about that was the trapezoid that had an the right angle. Right angle. So uh -huh. would that technically be a rectangle? No, because a rectangle has to be a parallelogram, and a trapezoid, the way that one was drawn, wasn't parallelogram. Like, that doesn't seem right, but yeah. it says only one right. Yeah, it does, it, but it has the parallelogram in the description, too. That's why. All right, true or false? An e we already answered some of these, so some of these I know you guys can just do. An equilateral triangle is isosceles. True. Yes, we already did that one. Apparently, I was so excited about it, I jumped the gun. Second one, a square is a regular quadrilateral. We didn't do that one today. We talked about regular last time. What was regular? It is in this section. Equiangular, four congruent angles, equilateral, four congruent sides. Yes, this is true. A square is a rhombus with a right angle. That's true. All angles of a rectangle are right angles. That's true. It, it isn't part of the definition. The definition said it has one right angle. But once you have one right angle and these parallel sides exist, it forces the rest of them to be right angles. So it is true. A rectangle is an isosceles trapezoid. True. That's the one you want me to write down. You want me to write down for square. But it's true. It's isosceles. I have two pair of base angles congruent, and it is a trapezoid because I have at least one pair, in fact, two pairs of parallel sides. The word sum is always fun. <laughs> Some isosceles trapezoids are kites. There's, there's an example, and I had to make sure that I was remembering right. It is true. Do you know what the shape is that makes it work? It's a square. It does seem like cheating. I totally agree. A square is an isosceles trapezoid, right? Yeah, a square is an isosceles trapezoid. A square is also a kite. A kite has two pairs of adjacent sides congruent and the other two pairs of adjacent sides congruent. So it also fits the definition of kite. What's that? How would a regular kite not work? Like in our brain, so we think it's a kite, not a square. Because you've got two congruent sides. And two, like, how much last is a rhombus? Yeah, so a rhombus will work here, too. Is that the one you're thinking of? Is like a rhombus? Yeah, I guess. I mean, you just said the reason it's true is because of a square, but I don't understand, like, why does it have to So, like, if you took this, yeah, this those. shape right here, you're not starting with a shape that's actually a trapezoid all of the pictures right here are not trapezoids because I don't have pairs of parallel sides. But I can. I mean, like, I, do, I would just need something with parallel sides to start with. So a square 
or a rectangle or a parallelogram or rhombus. I'd have to start there and figure out if any of those fit the description of kite. And squares and rhombuses do. So, yeah. All right, last one. If a kite has a right angle, then it must be a square. Seems divided. We have a divided class on this one. Okay, so I have a picture here. Let's see if I can draw it well enough to argue it. Um, I need a corner on my screen to draw a right angle. So here's my right angle, and I've drawn it in such a way, or I've tried to, that these are congruent to each other. Is that okay with you guys? Okay. So there is a right angle. I think it worked, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. So we don't have to have a square if we've got a right angle. Um, we just have to have one of the angles a right angle, but none of the rest of them would, would have to be if we did that. This piece right here is 90. So this one's actually false. How are you not do that one, Justin? <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, not a rectangle that actually isn't a square. Because in order to be a kite, the sides that are adjacent have to be congruent. And in a, what we think of as a rectangle, if you take the top side and, the, and a side length on the side, they're not congruent. Yeah, yeah. But if it's a square, it, it would be. But a, in our minds, a true rectangle doesn't work. All right, some organizational hierarchy. So I've got a, a fun picture for you to copy down. Okay, so it's going to take a second for you to get it all copied down, so I will wait. This is a graph, basically. of all of the different shapes we've talked about so far today, specifically today. We talked about some other ones last time, but specifically today, they're all on here. So it can't be a parallelogram and an isosceles triangle? Wait, no, it can. It can. So it can, what, like, which ones are mutually exclusive ones? Um, I'll show you when we get there. For those of you who have never taken a test that I've written before, um, when you get to your test, you get to use a note card on a test, right? I mean, those of you who have had before know that. This might be a good diagram to have on there to give yourself a picture of all those definitions and how they kind of interplay. of you're still writing, but let's just talk about the diagram. The left-hand part of the diagram is pretty straightforward, not too bad to work with, because it's the triangle part. It's less confusing. So the only two types of polygons we've talked about today are triangles and quadrilaterals. So we've got polygon at the top, and then if it's a polygon that we've talked about today, it's either a triangle or it's a quadrilateral. Okay? Three sides or four sides. Can't be both. That is totally true. Can't be both. 
Once you get to triangle, a triangle is either going to be scaling or isosceles. Scaling means it has no congruent sides, and isosceles means it has two congruent sides. But another way to describe isosceles triangle is, or I, it's not another way to describe it, but um, another, um, what do I want to say? Um, another um, more restrictive shape, a more restrictive shape is an equilateral triangle. So an equilateral triangle has all three sides the same. So if you have an isosceles triangle, it could be equilateral, but it wouldn't have to be, right? It's like a type of isosceles. It's a type of isosceles triangle, right, exactly. A type of one. Quadrilateral is kind of confusing because you've got this sort of intermixing picture, and the reality is that a square on the bottom is every single one of the things on the way up. Okay? So if you can find a location for something, if there's arrows going backwards, upwards to it, it's one of those things. So like rectangle, a rectangle is a parallelogram, an isosceles, trapezoid, a trapezoid, and a quadrilateral. A rhombus, a rhombus is a parallelogram, and a trapezoid, and a kite, and a quadrilateral. But notice it's not an isosceles trapezoid. Okay? Yes? Sorry, I wrote that as, I would go with Okay. So wherever you are, the, the sort of the, this diagram structure up from it tells you what else it had, you know, a looser description of it, right? So like if you have a square, it would be really odd to call it a parallelogram, but it wouldn't be a false statement about it, right? It would be true. It's just not very specific. It doesn't give you the most information that the word square gives you. So it's like, I mean, like any water triangle, so it's an triangle. Yes. Like they're all polygons. Correct. Right, so if I wanted to look at any of these shapes and just say, yep, it's a polygon, you couldn't argue that. It's true. It is a polygon. But saying something's a polygon gives you very little information, right? But saying something is an equilateral triangle gives you a lot of information. Megan? So a couple slides back when we listed like everything that it was, mm -hmm. if we started with a square and we knew it was a square, yes. we should write all the rest of them too? I'm not saying we should, but I'm saying it, they are also names for it. Oh, like if we're supposed to yeah, if you were to list everything that it could be, yes, you would do that. Um, most of the time, the directions will say something like this. They'll say, give the most specific name you can. So you look at the shape and you say, it's a square and you're done. Okay? Yeah. Any questions on the diagram? All right. 